What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Brave and Faithful. Uh, today, I have a guest who's been who's been on the podcast before. Uh, he is the boot nurse, uh, Kevin Gibson. What's going on, Kevin? Hey, what's going on? I appreciate you having me on. You know, you know, uh, I always enjoy being on these podcasts. They're fun. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, so you know, like I mentioned, I've had you. Uh, on before uh, you know we talked a little bit about you know the boot nurse and, and things like that um can you just describe to you know talk to our audience about you know what you've been up to since then and anything new and and you know plans with military uh, career so far yeah sure um so last time we talked it's you know it's well, it, it'll be two years sometime at the the latter end of this year and, uh, you know, in 2022 that we had a conversation. And at that point, I was still active duty. I was right. very, uh, very high strung and very gung ho about wanting to be a nurse corps officer. Uh, I was ready and prepared to work as a nurse. And, you know, a lot of that happened. Uh, I had a lot of things go on, like right after that podcast um, and a lot of life altering experiences that I had. Um, probably like if not in that month i think like the month after in 2020 so um one big thing that happened that i really don't tell anybody about is that uh i got a divorce which was a very uh it was a very uh big thing and a very uh emotional thing that most people don't talk about but i feel like for you know a lot of these audiences and and and, and to include you know my audience that follows me is you know i want to try to be as open and transparent uh, as much as I feel like I can without, you know, people being, I guess, weird about it. Um, but right. yeah, so, you know, went through a divorce and that was a hard, a hard thing for me uh, to get through. And right when I was going through that divorce, I decided that, you know what, I'm going to get off of active duty. And I did. I got off of active duty. Uh, but before I got off active duty, I uh, did what is called the Career Skill Bridge Program. For audience members who are still active duty in any branch of the military, it is a, a Department of Defense initiative, so to speak, where you can do an internship. Uh, essentially, you can do an internship anywhere for anything that you want to do. Mine specifically was nursing. And uh, I ended up doing my uh, I ended up doing mine at a uh, at the uh, the Institute of Surgical Research, uh, the burn ICU. And I did that for about four to six months, I believe. And that yeah. was my first experience that I got, you know, as a as a nurse. Um, after that, you know, went on terminal leave. Um, I had to re I had to sell uh, the house that I that I was living in with my then wife. Um, and then I bought another house right after that. Um, like uh, the biggest the biggest thing I want people to understand is that the transition off of the out of the military. And this goes for you because eventually you're going to retire, too. Yeah. Um, is that um, it takes time. It is a very um, is a very different and very weird transition getting off of active duty into the reserves or to retirement or to just getting out fully. And you have to be patient with yourself. I've been out for a year uh, as of July 7th uh, off of active duty. And it has been a journey for me to understand the civilian life and how they work and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, got off active duty. I started working in a hospital uh, as an ICU nurse, and I did that uh, for about seven months. Um, I realized that the ICU wasn't for me because of how unsafe uh, and unsafe patient nurse ratios and unsafe just tactics and things that these hospitals were doing. And so after about seven months, I left the ICU, uh, went into the operating room. And uh, been working in the operating room ever since. And that's kind of uh, where my journey has kind of put me uh, right. in regards to nursing. To answer your question in regards to the boot nurse for, uh, you know, I'm not saying I want to kind of, you know, beat a dead horse with that story. But, you know, boot nurse has, this, you know, has two terms or two meanings is like for civilians who don't understand it. It's, you know, when they think about somebody in boots or in a uniform, they think of somebody in the military. So that's kind of the one segue. And then the term boot is something that we use in the military, you know, to, you know, for newest sessions for people that are just learning or always learning 
Right. Um, and I consider myself a boot for just about everything. I'll call myself a boot or I'll call other people a boot, you know? So if you get offended by that, don't be, um, because you're always striving. You're always learning new things every day. Um, so, um, just recently, well, I'm not going to say just recently, but I've essentially been coaching people, uh, for two years as of June 5th of this year, it, hit, it was two years and, uh, I never charged anybody for anything. So now it's a full fledged business to where I essentially coach and I mentor people, um, through the, um, the NCLEX and essentially what the NCLEX is, it's a national licensing exam for nurses, for registered nurses, uh, licensed practical nurses and licensed vocational nurses to get their license to practice as a nurse. So I coach and I mentor um, on my off time when I'm not at work um, to, you know, help people achieve that goal and, 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 and you know, get on with their life and, and live that dream of wanting to take care of people. Yeah. So, I mean, like, during that time since we last spoke, obviously a lot has happened, you know, and personally from what you've shared with us. Um, And then also kind of like that transition process, right? Out of um, active duty and and, and into the the reserves. And then also during this time, you know, the past two years, you know, there's been, you know, with COVID and the pandemic and things like that. Right. um, You know, obviously with working in, in, in the medical field, how was that for you when you, you know, getting out of the the military working you know as a nurse and then experiencing basically the pandemic uh, the start of the pandemic to to now and then also um well yeah kind of just share with us that first okay um so getting off active duty which is a transition in itself and then jumping right into the nursing aspect and uh, the workforce as a nurse was, was was a huge transition, but I was very excited about it because I was like, you know, I worked eight years, eight, nine years to get to that specific point. Um, started working in the ICU um, and I had this whole, you know, thought process of what's going to happen. I even talked to the nurse managers. I talked to everybody and I was just like, you know, how do you guys train? Like, how do you guys do this? How do you guys do that? they're just like oh yeah yeah, you get all this you get all this you get all this and and, and in the end uh it was a complete lie uh essentially they just tell you what they want to tell you to get you in the door to get you working and then you know they tell you that you're ready when you know for a fact you aren't ready so um started working in the icu uh granted i loved it because it helps it helps you learn critically it helps you you know uh, understand a vast amount of things um but I felt, I felt ill prepared. So that's one, like on the knowledge aspect and in the military, we're very, very spoiled uh, because we do nothing but train. We always train to fight all day, every day, all the time. And uh, civilian side, at least at the specific hospital that I worked at, I can only speak for that. I can't speak for anybody else, but I did, they didn't, I feel like they just didn't prepare um, and with COVID going on, that was a huge deal because, you know, you have brand new nurses that are coming out and they're just getting thrown to the wolves. Right. And it was very, very hard. Like, it was very hard for me. Like, I had, um, you know, we had patients that my first day on the floor, I think we had like four or five people die. My first 15 minutes on the floor, somebody coded, you know, and died. And she was a young, a young woman who just had a baby and she was 38 years old. Wow. So to hear that, you're just like okay, well, this is kind of what comes with the territory, um, you know, because this is the most critical, this is the most critical area in the hospital. Right. And so, you know, man, my experience was just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about when I go somewhere new, but my experience is just sometimes are just not great. Like <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had a preceptor for three weeks and then she went, you know, PRN. And then I ended up having another preceptor like I ended up having a total of like five or six preceptors. All of them taught different. None of them. There was no continuity. Uh, like all I knew was COVID, COVID, COVID. COVID. Right. And did it give you any doubt, like in your head? It's like, did you did you kind of like doubt yourself as far as like making that de- decision? All the time. Know, decision. Yeah. All the time. I was. Just, I kept saying like, why am I here? And the thing about it is just like everybody. Fe- everybody feels that way. 
Um, everybody feels that way. I had imposter syndrome really bad. Uh, I actually plan on making a video about imposter syndrome for nurses, specifically for nurses, but it is a, it is a very, you know, targeted term for anybody who is a, trying to achieve something different. It doesn't matter if you go to school to be a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, if, you, if you're doing real estate or if you're doing bit, like you always feel like, oh man, like what did I get myself into? I don't know what right. I'm doing. I don't belong. But over time, um, you know, you start to kind of learn and you start to kind of understand the, of, of everything that's going on. So I definitely felt that way for sure, yeah. So like throughout throughout all that, you know, maybe like you know having those doubts. Uh, what kind of what kind was there like a specific moment or time where you're like you know what you know you kind of like refocus and mean like I'm gonna get through this and this is what I want to do. Like was there a specific moment or time that kind of helped you push through those difficult times? Yeah. To be honest, there was two. There's two of them, uh, two, I guess, factors. Uh, one uh, were the girls that I worked with. Um, mm. All, every single one of them, except for one who I didn't like, and she knows I don't like her. I'm not gonna give her the, the benefit of the doubt of, of saying her name, but she knows I don't like her. And if you hear it, if you hear this, I just wanna let you know that I don't like you. Um, <laughs> but, um, but most definitely it was the girls that I worked with. Like I had some phenomenal, women on that floor with me like i can say their names like Haley, chloe carly amanda uh uh kristen like there were some awesome awesome women on there that we always uh jennifer we always supported one another like when those nights sucked like and i worked nights and it, and well man let me tell you like we if if a patient wasn't if a patient wasn't passing away or if we weren't overwhelmed we were always helping each other and it was great. Um, the second thing was the true satisfaction of feeling like you, you know, what we say in the ICU, what we, you know, say in the ICU is like you fix them, is where you you learn that your critical thinking after a while starts to kind of kick in and you're trying to figure out like what's going on with the patient. What do I need to do? Do I need to give them more meds? Do I need to turn some of their meds down? Um, why is their blood pressure high? Or you know, what is the side effect of this medication that's making this vital sign do this? So it was a lot of, it was a lot of not trial and error, but it was just a lot of tweaking and peaking um, in the ICU. And it's great experience. If anybody ever wants to be an ICU nurse, I would always tell them like, hey, you can go there and you can thrive if that's what you really, really want to do. Um, but it's, you know, those are the two things that helped me like get through those really, really crappy you know nights was those girls and the true satisfaction of feeling like you know you really really help somebody so that kind of leads into my my next question um you know for any of our viewers or listeners um you know might be listening to this podcast like they're interested in becoming a nurse or specifically being an icu nurse or, or whatnot what sort of advice or tips would you give them? Maybe even, you know, like those brand new nurses, boot nurses, right? Mm, right. Uh, that are out there uh, who might be struggling with the, you know, the, the same thoughts that you had in the beginning or, um, you know, why did I choose this career path? Like what advice would you kind of give them? Okay. So the first, I guess I'll start with those individuals who are just now be trying to become a nurse go to where you go to where your heart desires if the icu no matter what the struggle is within the icu if that is where you want to go by all means please go there because my dream is not your dream my dreams have changed uh, but my dream is not your dream on what you want to accomplish most people go to the icu because they want that hardcore challenge same thing like going to the er they want that hardcore challenge yeah. um and that's great. Or a lot of people, they want that hardcore challenge or they only want to be in the ICU because they want to go to be a flight nurse or they want to go be a CRNA. Uh, CRNA is a certified registered nurse of anesthesia or a nurse anesthetist for those individuals who don't know what that means. Um, by all means, if you are a brand new nurse coming right out of school and if you want to go wherever you want to go, go. 
Uh, and secondly, for those individuals who are in an area of nursing that they don't feel comfortable with to include the ICU, you are not bound to anyone. You can leave at any point in time because your mental health and your happiness matters above everyone else. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you're not going to be any good to yeah. the floor and you're not going to be, you're especially not going to be uh, any good to your patients. Yeah, I think that's, those are two great points, right? Uh, you mentioned in the beginning, uh, you know, my dream is not your dream. Right. Um, we all have each individual dreams. And then also, you know, your second point, obviously, big thing now, I mean, uh, mental health, right? It's, right. It's key. Um, if you're not happy and if you're not satisfied with what you're doing, um, you're not going to be of any good help really to to anybody else you know you can't if you can't help yourself you won't be able to help anybody else right very true so i mean um you know for people who might be struggling with that what are like some avenues that they can kind of take as far as like um you know helping them get past through those mental health or any barriers like that well um I'll speak specifically to nurses is like what we do a lot of times that we lean on each other, like because we are there with each other every day or three days or whatever your shift is, is, you know, lean on one another, um, mm -hmm. you know, have those debriefs um, like a lot of times, well, actually all the time when we had a, a code blue or anything going on like that, that was super crazy. You know, the physicians would always ask us, it was just like, Hey, um, is it, is it, does anybody else have any ideas? Like, is there anything that we missed? And we're, and we're all sitting there and we're just like, no. And then after that time, it's kind of hard to do a, what they call a debrief, which is where we all sit around or well, not sit around, but we all, you know, we talk about it, like, as in like, Hey, what could we have done better? Hey, it's not your fault. Hey, we all did what we could do because we had a lot of patients that came in that were very sick. So, um, lean on those individuals that you work with it doesn't necessarily i mean you don't have to like them but you know if you if you find somebody that you're that you that you vibe with you know lean on them and i could tell you right now there were so many mornings when we would get off and we would go to it would be me and a bunch of the people on the floor and we would go eat breakfast and it, it seemed like it was an, an everyday thing and then all we would do is sit there and vent like exhausted eating yeah. an omelet or pancakes or whatever and we're just laughing about stuff because that was our way to debrief uh that was our way to cope with the craziness that we saw on a daily basis um the second thing i uh i would i would i would always suggest to everyone is to um seek out counseling yeah. um i would i was i've always been a big proponent of counseling uh i started going to counseling when i came back from afghanistan in 2013 um and it you know it, and it's been it's been a very uh life altering uh experience going uh, to those um to those counseling sessions because they uh they let you know a lot about yourself i'm sorry you learn a lot about yourself they don't let you know they 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 you know they point you in the direction to where you have aha moments and you realize you know where you are in life and how things happen and how to better push forward for yourself um so those are the two things I would uh, definitely suggest. It's like, you know, have a group of like-minded people that you guys can lean on and vent to one another and, and push each other in positive directions and counseling for sure. Yeah, I think those are two great advice. I mean, like, you know, what, what, whatever profession you're in, right? You all, at the end of the day, if you're struggling mentally and, and you know, things like that, um, you should. You should always be able to talk about it with someone or bring that up to somebody that can, you know, kind of help you guide you through that. Yeah. Those, those times. Yeah. Like there, there's like, and, and I know some people are going to be like, you know, I mean, I can't afford a counselor, you know, cause they're 150, $250 an hour. And I was just like, Facebook is free or meta it's free. <laughs> uh, they have freaking like uh the facebook groups you know right. like you like there are facebook groups that i'm a part of where people they meet up like at a park and they just kind of just hang out and they talk or they meet at starbucks or they just do they just have meetups you know to network and kind of you know you know like-minded people like leaning on each other uh mm -hmm. so like there, there's like free counseling amongst like you know the your peers of of, of nurses or your peers of you know of 
I, I, I keep reverting to real estate, but you know, just just all kinds of just different. There's all types of free stuff out there. There's free programs. Um, mm-hmm. I can really tell you there's a lot of free programs. If you go to this one website, it's called google.com and you will find them <laughs> all over the place. So don't make an excuse to not go. If you really feel like you need to go, the, the, there are opportunities and there are things out there for you um, uh, for you to utilize. So utilize them for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point. I mean, like Google, I mean, YouTube, those are two free resources. Oh, yeah. Find whatever you, you, you might need, right? Specifically. Oh, yeah. Want to support an active duty owned brand? Head over to Fortis Fidelis.com. Again, that's Fortis Fidelis.com. And help us in honoring the brave and faithful service of our nation's defenders. All proceeds will help us create and provide memorial coins to the families of our fallen service members. Again, that's fortis fidelis.com and help Fortiset Fidelis in honoring the brave and faithful. Um, all right, so like. Kevin, talk to us a little bit about, you know, you mentioned, um, we mentioned earlier about you coaching others through um, NCLEX. What, uh, you know, what kind of led you to to doing that? And, you know, talk to us about, like, what are some of, I guess, like, um, how, how you're able to do that now? Okay. Um, so here's my why. The first thing I'll say before I say my why is that I don't care what anybody tells you for my individuals that are going to nursing school is, or want to be a nurse is nursing school doesn't teach you how to pass your NCLEX. It teaches you how to graduate and then it teaches you, you know, the basic skills of, of what it's like to be a nurse, but you will never learn how to be a nurse until you start, you know, getting that job experience. Um, and so that was the things that I that, that was the one thing that I realized is because when I was took when I took my test the first time, I was just like, man, I don't remember any of this. So, um, you know, and then I failed my exam the first three times. Um, but rather than say, like, I am not going to just let this test beat me because all it is is a test. You know, I changed a bunch of things up and then I eventually ended up passing. Now, my why, my why of why I started coaching and mentoring is I never want people to feel how I felt. I never want people to feel that they didn't have anybody to talk to or anybody to lean on or anybody to guide them in the right direction when it came to conquering this exam. So it was, it had to have been what the day after I, um, the day after I had uh, launched or I had passed my exam, I had launched my YouTube. And I started, you know, putting out videos and stuff like that. People really started to resonate with them. I was in Facebook groups telling people like, hey, you know, I passed my exam. If anybody ever needs help, feel free to reach out. Uh, And then, you know, people started reaching out and, you know, I was talking to them on Facebook or on Instagram. Sometimes I would do video calls. Mind you, I was doing all this for free. I would set aside time. I would be like, hey, talk to me. I would like if I was visiting family, I would go out and sit in my truck and I would talk to them uh on like facetime or whatever for like an hour you know to to motivate them and to make them feel better and to tell them ways that they could change up their study habits and you know break down you know questions with them and i did this for two years and it wasn't until june of this year that i turned it into an actual uh business to where i call it the um the the boot nurse coaching And I created essentially a website to where I said, if I was, I said that if you're looking for mentorship or coaching in regards to NCLEX, I have a free one hour coaching that I do. And the main reason why I started charging is because something that I've learned by reading a lot of books is like money is the most replenishable thing on the planet. But the one thing we can never get back is our time. It doesn't matter where our time is allocated to the work, to the, to the Navy, to, to any part of the, to, to, you know, working as a nurse, you know, I can go and make this money and, you know, willy nilly everywhere else, but that's right. set aside an hour to two hours for you. And then you don't show up. That's two hours that you're taking away from my family, two hours that you're taking away from somebody else who really does need my help, you know? So, 
that's why I decided to do the free coaching because the free coaching, you know, was my essentially my call to action for people can see that I'm a real person uh, and that I really want to provide excellent content for them or excellent, you know, mentorship and coaching for them. Um, and then, uh, you know, I leave it up to them on whether or not they want to purchase, you know, the sessions that I offer. Uh, but it allowed for me to have more, con the biggest thing, it's not even really about the money. It allowed me to have more control with my time. Right. So, um, that's kind of how the coaching and the mentoring, uh, came the, 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 the boot nurse coaching came to fruition. Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely 100% agree with you there as far as like, you know, money, vice time, right? I mean, because um, I mean, I, I do coaching as well. And it's like, you know, you, you put yourself out there as far as like committing time into, let's say, a client or a potential client. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, if they don't, you know, re recognize the value, well, what's more valuable, right? Uh, if they don't recognize that value, then there's only so much you can kind of do from there to, to kind of help them out. Right. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, you, know, you know, we mentioned your, your transition out of the, the military active duty and into the reserves, mm -hmm. uh, your experience as a nurse, uh, specifically in, in, in the ICU, and then now you're coaching, um, others to help them pass their, their NCLEX, um, what you know what for anybody that's probably anybody that's listening what kind of actionable step or um, things that you can kind of provide for audience as far as like advice for anybody that's maybe wanting to go that route go that route as in like as, uh, as a as a a nurse pursue, pursue okay nurse. so if anybody okay i got you so if anybody wants to pursue nursing first thing you need to do you need to sit down and have a conversation with yourself and say, you know, why do I want to be a nurse? Do you want to do it because you genuinely want to help people? Do you want to do it because you want to make a lot of money because you see that travel nurses are making three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 a week? Uh, or you saw that they were making $10,000 a week? Let me just go ahead and tell y'all, that ain't happening no more. Those glory days are over. That was the wild, wild west. That ain't happening no more. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, is that the reason why you do it? Are you doing it because it's a tradition in your family? You know, it's just like, what's your why? Like, what is your, like, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of like, point. it's like, you know, it's, it's like, what's your purpose? Like all Rick and Morty, you're like, what's your purpose? You pass butter. And he's just like, what? So, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to him. So it's like, what is your, like, what is your purpose? You know, what is your why of why you want to be a nurse? Um, second thing is um, utilize utilize what is around you um use facebook pages to get knowledge uh off of like what it's like to be a nurse or what it's like for the process for you to become a nurse get all get as much educate yourself as much as possible uh before you embark on this journey like people are going to tell you like hey you're going to see blood hey you're going to see you're going to see you know bodily fluid you're going to see poop you're going to see you know vomit you're going to see you know all kinds of stuff you know do you really want to deal with that um so educate yourself if you decided based off of your education and you understand your why the next thing you need to do is start researching um what classes need to be taken like do you, you know do you does your school require you to take chemistry one and two do they require you to take a foreign language do they require you to take religious classes because some of these schools require you to take those classes do they require you to take, uh, you know, like nutrition? Some of them don't. Does your school that you're looking at already provide all those courses? Um, what's your money look like? Like, can you afford to take, you know, to jump into a program? Do you want to get student loans? Do you want to find uh, other ways to offset your, your money as in, you know, looking at scholarships or pay grants or student loans? Uh, student loans, I would never advise anyone to get student loans. Uh, but if you're really hardcore dedicated into getting into nursing school and the student loan is the route that you want to go, by all means, I am not a financial advisor. I just know that I don't do student loans. Um, <laughs> so um, there's that. Once you figure out the classes and stuff that you want to go to or the classes that you need, start looking into programs, start applying. 
apply to as many programs as you feel you need to. But remember, when you apply at these programs, they cost money because nothing in this world is free ever. Um, so that is the path that essentially somebody needs to take. Like, you know, you got to do all this, you know, do the research, do your do your due diligence, as they say. Right. And that way it doesn't uh, it doesn't feel like things are starting to, you know, hit you out of left field. So I think that's a really good place for people to start if they were trying to pursue uh, nursing as a career. Yeah, I think that first question you mentioned, right? Like, what's your why? I think that can apply to any, you can ask anybody that prof- uh, question. Anybody. To, you know, whatever profession that they're going into, right? Like, why do you want to do this, right? Yeah. Like, you mentioned, is it, are you, are you motivated by the, how much the income, the money? Are you motivated because this is actually your passion? Or mm-hmm. it's like, you know, things like things of that nature so I, that's the, that's the first great question right there um so kevin before we go to the second segment of the podcast here so you know what's one thing you know one thing you want our listeners or our viewers to kind of take away from this episode uh man there's a lot that i could tell the listeners to to take away from here um the i guess the first thing i would say is uh your happiness matters before anybody else's never put anyone else's happiness before yours because if they're happy and you're miserable that's a problem because you're like there's no other way i can put that if you're not happy where you are or what you're doing reevaluate your life and where it's at and find a way to be positively happy um so if that means if you're a hey, if you're you know if you're active duty and you don't want to be active duty anymore that's okay you know you can you know go to where, go to where your heart desires i've talked to two friends one's been in about four almost 14 years one's been in almost 17 or no 19 years and they are both miserable but one is going to stick it out until she retires and then the other one said you know what it's time for me to go and I was just like, you know what? I respect both of your decisions um, on what you want to do. But the other one, I told her, I was just like, she told me that I was so brave for getting out. And I was just like, I couldn't stay here because I wasn't happy. I was just like, I just wasn't happy where I was at that moment. Um, right. And she said, I wish I was just that brave. I only have a, like two years left. But I was like, but those are going to be the those are going to be the two most miserable years of your life. And she was just like, yeah, and I, I feel that way. She, but you know, she's worried about the retirement check and all this other stuff. But hey, that's okay. You know, she's still a good friend of mine. I respect her decision, and that's just something that she has to deal with. Um, but yeah, your happiness is um, is the biggest thing ever uh, in regards to anything that you do. So I think that's something that um, I could give the audience this go around. Maybe in another two years, I'll tell them something different. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely great advice. I mean, if you're not happy, then that kind of affects everything in your, in your life, right? Absolutely. So, um, all right, Kevin. So going into the second segment here, I know you're familiar with the questions that I'm about to ask you. I am. Uh, these are the fast five, same five questions I ask all my guests. So first question, what's one hobby you enjoy? Oh man. Okay. I have a few, but the two, I want, I, I, I want to give you two. So number one, uh, I had, I, I had my first, uh, my first child in March. Mm. Um, and he literally takes up all the time and I love watching <laughs> this little boy grow. Um, and my hobby honestly is just watching this little boy grow <laughs> like yeah. i cannot i cannot for anybody that well like when you know when you became a, a first-time parent like it, it hits you different and you're just like wow yeah. i made you like it's kind of like that one uh that one uh tiktok you're like have you made people yet he was like yeah i made my own people and i'm not <laughs> that's kind of how it is i look at him i'm just like bro do you know you're about to be raised by me like why why who did this who made this happen um <laughs> So I would say that one. And the second one is uh, I love, 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 love reading. I have never read or listened to so many audiobooks or read so many books in my entire life than I have in the last two years. Um, so my biggest thing is reading books. Yeah. Is it. Self, 
self development, self improvement, things of that nature. It is it is crazy to me yeah. how I, I I just didn't enjoy reading. But then I realized that it's not about the fact that I didn't enjoy reading. It was about how the information was delivered to me. I can't sit and actually read a book because it makes me sleepy. However, if you put it in, if you put it in audio form to where I'm working or when I'm driving, especially when I'm driving, um, like the knowledge just sinks in. It just, it just, it yeah. hits, it hits in such a different way that I just really can't, I really cannot explain. So those would, I would say would be the two. All right. Well, uh, next question here is if you had to choose one person to hang out with who would it be and why oh man i know last time i said uh it was gary vanderchuk yeah, yeah. uh oh, man i would still love to meet gary vanderchuk <laughs> <laughs> i um but it's there's so many other people man that i that i wish i could meet like i would love to you know meet President Obama. I would love to meet Robert Kiyosaki. If they don't, and I, I'm pretty sure everybody in the audience knows who Robert Kiyosaki is, but you know, he's the creator of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Like, yeah. I would love to uh, meet the guy. There's like, these guys that um, that do a podcast called um, uh, Earn Your Leisure. I would love to meet those guys. Um, but the biggest one right now that I would probably want to meet. Man, it would still be Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary <laughs> V, yeah. Uh, so, like Gary, uh, you know, let's say he's 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 uh, running strong on 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 the on the people that I want to meet for sure, most definitely. Yeah, that, I mean, he, that'd be a fun conversation. It would be one hundred percent. All right. So, speaking the reading, audiobooks, things like that, right? You mentioned earlier. What's one book you want to recommend for our audience to read? Uh, I really feel like it's kind of cliche to um recommend everybody read rich dad poor dad because i feel like everybody tells everybody to read rich dad poor dad but the one book i'm going to tell everybody that they need to read uh is rich dad poor dad <laughs> <laughs> um because i know the last book that i um i recommended was on call in hell by dr richard jaddick and it definitely does give the perspective of a uh a, a general medical officer during a, a time of war Right. And um, it's a it's a great it's a great, great book. Um, and I recommend that to anybody. But Rich Dad, Poor Dad is and it's crazy because I read that I, I attempted to try to read the book and I got through like maybe three or four chapters like in 2017. And then it didn't really hit to where it really sank in until last year, July. And I and I was I was doing something and I was just like, wait, what did he say? But it's just the way that the stories are articulated that a fifth grader can understand it. As yeah. a matter of fact, I my my niece is nine years old and she loves listening to the audiobook when she's driving with me. Oh, that's awesome. Like she loves it. She's just like, what's real estate? And I'm just like, oh, I got her. It's over now. It's yeah. over. Like you belong to me, child. Um, so um, you know, like just the way that the stories are articulated, it, it you know, it it tells you, you know how to not how to be rich but how to it's mentally it is a very mindful. huge mental thing there's yeah. a book that he actually wrote and i recommend everybody on this podcast that is a veteran it is called um what is it the eight uh military uh leaderships you know what hold on give me one second I'm, a, I'm literally going to tell you. It's called The Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs, and it is written by Robert Kiyosaki. If people don't know, he used to be a Marine Corps pilot during Vietnam. And yeah. he will, he will, he, in this book, he talks about that. But then he talks about how the military sets us up. And I say us as in active duty, reservists, even, you know, and, and all veterans, it sets us up for entrepreneurship. Like yeah. you ever thought of, I want you to really think about this. You, you ever had that Lance Corporal who's a, you know, that E3 that's running an entire warehouse. Who's in yeah. charge of millions of dollars of supplies at an E3 who's like 19, 20 years old. Like some people like don't realize, like they don't realize that. But then when you become a civilian, <laughs> The job that you did flawlessly in the military, they look at you and they ask you, what are your credentials? And it doesn't matter. But it's just like, if I'm that Lance Corporal, I can go out here and I can run my own, I can run my own warehouse and I can run, I can own my own warehouse and I can run circles around everybody just because of how 
just because of the tenacity that the military has instilled in us. So, yeah, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you two books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, to, to help open up your mind. And then The Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs by Robert Kiyosaki. I promise you, I've recommended to a, a couple of, uh, of my buddies that who were in the service right now or who were in the service. I'm sorry, they're not in the service anymore. But I recommended that and they loved it. And they, they said it hits different because you can see yourself. So those are the two books I recommend. I know it's only one, but I gave you two. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, no, I don't know. I'm not following the rules. <laughs> I actually had it uh, just looked that up. The uh, eight lessons in military leadership for entrepreneurs. It's a, it's a great book. It's a great book. I'm that. telling you. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question, Kevin. What's your favorite quote? And why? Uh, I'm going to stick with my same quote is I learn new things every day. Yeah. And I truly, truly do learn new things every day because I don't know where people got the mindset to where once you learn one thing, you're supposed to stick with that one thing and, and, and learn it like for the rest of your life, like kind of like where you have a job. Hey, you became a you became a pilot, so you need to be a pilot and not do anything else. Right. Um, I'm not a firm believer in that. However, I do believe it's like once you find something that you love, you should uh, you should um, uh, hone in on it and you should go all in on it uh, because that is what will make you uh, not only wealthy, but very successful. Um, but uh, the learning new things every day, it's 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 just one of those things to where like you could Google something and Google a word and be like, man, I didn't know what that meant. Or you could jump right into something that is completely out of your something that you were interested in thinking that it was out of your league. And then you realize that, you know, I learned this. So now I can bring, you know, more knowledge to myself to give to others or, you know, everybody's trying to chase money and trying to chase freedom. So, you know, I like to use real estate as an example. I'm learning a lot about real estate, all aspects of real estate right now. And just to sit there and learn it or sit there in these groups and listen to these people talk or uh, listening to real estate books. Like it is just it is, a, it is a totally different level to where I'm just like, man, like I love I love learning this. I love learning everything about it. So you learn new things every day. Don't don't put yourself in a box, people. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Learn stuff every day and be be you know, a great wealth of knowledge for, for other people to, you know, to lean on. Yeah. I mean, it just goes back to the whole fix versus growth mindset. Yeah. Um, 100%. So final question, Kevin, where do you see yourself in five years or even 10 years from now? Hmm. I know last time we talked about this, I said, I saw myself, you know, five years working in or a year working in the ICU, five years doing flight within 10 years. I want to be CRNA. Those aren't even on my radar anymore. Those are completely gone. Um, because I realized that the service that I'm providing to people is my niche of what I 100% love to do, which is to help people, which is to coach people, which is to mentor people to, to get through this exam. Yeah. Because a lot of people have spent their time, their money, you know, have sacrificed their lives, their families to, to get to this point. And I want them to be successful. Um, within the next five years, um, I plan on having um, a full fledged, uh, you know, NCLEX course that I am still currently working on right now. But within five years, I want that course to be, you know, it's going to be 100 percent, you know, optimal to where you know people can purchase that at any point in time and they can you know you know recommend it to people or reach out to me on instagram everybody that talks to me on instagram i they, i talk back to them like i'm not one of those people who i just you know I'm, I'm i'm too big for my own pants but um yeah within the next five years i i, I that's that's what's going to happen and i'm going to be all in on that and i'm going to be 100 self-employed and i'm not going to be working for nobody but the boot nurse llc coaching and providing uh providing you know a wealth of knowledge and a service to all who want it um within 10 years honestly it's probably going to fall more within the five but within the 10 years um i want to still be continuing to coach but i want to uh continue my knowledge of being truly free uh financially free uh to where i can focus all of my time back into my course to 
provide a service to everybody uh you know who who requires it like right. everything everything at this point is 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 centered around me coaching people to be successful you know on this nursing exam for them to go out there and be successful at life because I, I i talk to people all the time and i'm just like sometimes i was like it's not just about this test i was like you got to think about every aspect like what's your what's your time management like are you accountable do yeah. you have a do you have a good support system because i'm telling you if you have somebody who's out there it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't have to be nursing but if you if you don't have a good support system and people under and they undermine you and they don't think that you can do it like that will that can destroy your morale for anything like so do you have a good support system do you know how to study do you know what to study do you like it's just you know i could go down that rabbit hole a thousand times but that is where i see my next five to ten years is you know being financially free to where i can continuously you know help people because that's all i that's all i want to do is i want i want to help people and i don't ever want people to feel how i felt and felt lost well kevin man that's that's been awesome kind of you know knowing you through social media and then kind of like the journey you've been this past two years since mm. we've we've uh we've last talked or had you on the show uh, keep doing great things man and keep uh you know passing on the knowledge to you know to those that are seeking and uh you know thanks again for for being on the on the podcast here but bef- before we go tell us again where can our audience where can they follow you where can they support you oh okay um well first of all thank you for thank you for having me uh again on the podcast like i really do enjoy doing these things and i really just like you know you know, after a long day at work, man, I just like, you know, chit chat with somebody who's like minded. So, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it, it may, you know, it makes me feel better because sometimes I'll be talking to everybody, some people at work or other people. And I'm just like, man, sometimes y'all just don't get it. But that's OK, because, you know, you may not be ready for that. But anyways, um, uh, all of my social media handles are at the boot nurse. So, you know, the at symbol T-H-E-B-O-O-T-N-U-R-S-E. That's on TikTok facebook instagram youtube um i do have a website uh for my coaching it is the boot nurse coaching dot my kajabi kajabi is spelled k-a-j-a-b-i dot com so that is um the boot nurse coaching dot my kajabi dot com and i also sell apparel at the boot nurse dot com where you can grab you a shirt you can grab you a uh, you know, a, a, a tumbler. You can grab you a pair of socks. You know, so I mean, I got a pair of socks. I say the boot nurse on it because who's gonna advertise better than me? But um, <laughs> so uh, those are all my social media handles. Uh, please come give me a follow. Hey, come you know, come talk to me if you guys have any questions. Hell, even if you would just want to chit chat about whatever, like I'm cool. I'm always on social media. I'm super active on Instagram. So come over, come hang out, and let's talk. I post some really funny memes too. So. It's always a good time over there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, brother. Well, again, I appreciate the time and sharing your knowledge and also, you know, the mindset, right? The, the growth mindset, vice the fixed mindset. And uh, again, appreciate the time, man. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back soon. Oh, absolutely. You already know. Reach out and I'm here for it. Awesome, brother. Take care. All right. Thanks, man.